I'm, uh, I'm Paul Winnick. I'm currently working as the uh, Deputy Minister of Municipal Affairs. I'm a proud Ukrainian Canadian, at least half Ukrainian Canadian on my, uh, my dad's side. Uh, my great grandparents uh, came to Canada in 1903 when my grandfather was 12 years old. Uh, they were from Galicia, like many, uh, many uh, Ukrainian Canadians from Alberta are, can trace their roots back to what is now Western Ukraine and Eastern Poland. Uh, they sailed through Hamburg on the SS Arcadia and landed in, uh, in Halifax in 1903. Took the train all the way across Canada to Wetaskiwin, because I think that's where the train ended at that time, and homestanded in the, uh, the Copernic area, which is between Daysland and Holden. Uh, when, it, when my grandfather was old enough, my grandfather was 12 years old at the time, 12 or 13 years old. He was born in uh, 1890. So when it came time for him to homestead, most of the arable land sort of in central Alberta uh, around the Edmonton area was taken. Uh, and he homesteaded at Stry, Alberta, which is not too far from Vilna, very, uh, very near the current uh, Saddle Lake Reserve uh, on the north side of the, uh, the North Saskatchewan River, and that's where uh, my father uh, was born. So they homesteaded there in 1911. Uh, my grandmother uh, was born in Ukraine uh, as well, emigrated, her family emigrated to Canada in 1905. Uh, if I recall, I think they were married in 1910 or 1911. I don't recall exactly. I know they were married actually in the Roman Catholic Church, even though they were Ukrainian Catholic. They were married in the uh, Roman Catholic Church on the Saddle Lake Reserve because there was no Ukrainian Catholic Church at that time. Uh, and started raising a family, I guess, in 1914. Uh, my uncle, uh, the oldest member of the family, was born in 1914. Now, I do know with regards to the internment operations, my grandfather was not interned, um, but I was told, uh, my late father certainly relayed this to me, that he did have to register as an enemy alien at the time because, of course, he had Austro-Hungarian Austro citizenship, and the Austro-Hungarians were part of the Axis. They were, they were the enemy uh, at the time, and I think he was required, uh, once again, so I was told, to actually report in on a frequent basis to the closest Royal Northwest Mounted Police uh, Detachment. I'm not sure where that was at the time. I think it may have been in Smoky Lake. I'd have to do some more research on it at that time. So once again, he was not, uh, not interned. Uh, maybe uh, part of this had to do with the fact he was also the local postmaster in Stry, Alberta, and actually ran a post office out of the, the small sod hut. And in fact, we still have the, the porcelain sign in the family that with the royal coat of arms that says post office. And we have pictures of that on the old sod hut, if you will, back in 1914 or 1915. Uh, so the, um, uh, it raised a large, uh, large family, eight or nine kids. I, I had an aunt who passed away as an infant during the flu epidemic, uh, rather topical uh, right now. Uh, my late father was born in 1920. Once again, they grew up in the Depression, uh, very hard times. Um, but one of the things I was told, and like I said, I have no memory of my grandfather, was notwithstanding the fact that he was, uh, did have to register as an enemy alien, he was a very patriotic Canadian. He was a fervent supporter of the, uh, of, of the Crown as well, uh, quite a firm monarchist. And when I asked my dad why, he said because this, this country gave him so much. He had 160 acres, it was his own, uh, his own farm, he was master of his own destiny, to the point that during the Second World War, he actually uh, felt quite strongly that some of his sons should volunteer and join up and serve overseas. So their oldest child, my Uncle Bill, did. In fact, he was killed in action, serving with the Royal Canadian Air Force in uh, Bomber Command. And my father also joined up during the, uh, the Second World War as well. And I think it's probably because of that influence, the, um, the military influence, my dad's service, and I think loyalty to a queen and country, uh, to, to the monarchy and, and to the institution of Canada as a whole, that I became very interested in a military career, and I was blessed with a long and uh, very fulfilling career in the, uh, in the Canadian Armed Forces. So that's, in a nutshell, that's sort of the, the winning story from 1903 until now. Well, I think, I think it's very important to remember our roots, remember what happened, remember the circumstances. I think you're well aware if it had not been for a number of folks like Lubomir Luchuk uh, who actually researched this, this could have been forgotten in time. And I think it's a, a very important part of our history as Ukrainian Canadians, but part of Alberta's history uh, and Canada's history as well. 
to actually remember what happened, understand the circumstances, and ideally uh, prevent things like that happening from happening in the future. Now, we have the benefit of hindsight right now. And, you know, looking back, knowing what the government knew at the time, uh, that may well have been the right decision at the time. We don't really know. Like I said, we know all the factors now. Probably wasn't a good thing when you look back on it, just based on on one's nationality and one's birth certificate, particularly when Canada was so dependent on Galicians to populate the Western provinces. I mean, they were, I, as we all know, uh, under uh, Clifford Sifton, the federal immigration minister at the time, there were lots of advertisements in Galicia and Western Ukraine to come to Canada, uh, get your land, populate the West. But there were good uh, Canadian motives to do that as well, to actually populate the West to prevent American expansionism and a number of other, and, and actually tap into the, uh, the economic potential of the West. So when you look back on it in hindsight, it, it, it does seem a little harsh that, you know, 10, 15 years earlier, uh, this country welcomed uh, Galicians, Ukrainian Canadians with open arms, yet, you know, during the war they were, they were interned or had to register as enemy aliens. So I think it's just important that we remember that chapter in our history and that we learn from it as we go into the future and, and, and to actually commemorate it. It's part of my personal heritage. Uh, as I said, my grandfather wasn't interned, uh, but it's still something that, uh, that I think we have to educate folks about.